Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and it's time for your weekly wrap up and I want to begin first as we always do by thanking our newest Patreon supporters. We have Joe Anchian and Dave Burnside. I want to thank both of you for contributing to the Patreon and to everyone who has been contributing on a regular basis and of course all of you who watch as well. I will be updating the end credits later this week so all the new folks who came on in January, uh, you should be seeing your name up there very shortly in the credit rolls. Let's move on to what is uh, going on this week on the channel. So I didn't get that much done this this week, uh, primarily because my uh, my poor little daughter and my wife came down with that nasty norovirus, and I was working to keep the other kid uh, healthy and quarantined from the sick ones. So uh, we are all better. Everybody's in good shape now. Knock on wood, and we've bleached the entire house, but that did uh, impact things a bit because I was on solo dad duty. But I did get a couple of videos up. We got two up on the extra channel where I unboxed the game store controller and showed you some sample footage from the Zero Tech Dobby drone. I'll be doing a little bit more on the uh, footage from that drone with the stabilizer on in the next couple of days. Uh, we also did some videos on uh, Netflix and how you can now download to an SD card. I covered this on the Amazon uh, video app and I figured it would only be fair to cover it on Netflix because this is a really good way for folks, especially under uh, data caps on their cable or mobile providers to avoid that, especially when their kids watch things over and over again, but also very good for travelers. In fact, I downloaded a couple of Netflix shows to my phone when I went out to CES and it was great having all of that with me on the plane, which is always great to see. Uh, Bruno Amari, Amaro wrote in though about Chromebooks and whether or not it, this would work uh, with the Android app that can now run on the Chromebooks. And unfortunately, I, don't, I think you could download to your main storage through that app, but uh, the Chromebooks right now don't seem to get access to the SD card uh, through the Android side of their operating system. So right now it looks like this is limited to Android tablets only, uh, but I think on the uh, Chromebooks you should be able to download for offline viewing. I'll have to double check that, but I'm uh, pretty sure the SD cards are definitely out, but offline viewing is possible. Uh, we also got to look at the Dobby Pocket drone, a really small little drone that actually has some uh, decent flight intelligence to it, but I wasn't crazy about the camera, and uh, that kind of uh, got me because uh, the cost on this is rather high. It's about $450, or $350 to $400, so a little on the pricier side of things than I would like to see with a camera of this quality, but definitely check it out if you are looking for a drone that is very portable, that has some decent uh, autonomy and flight controls involved with it. And we also got to look at the GameSir T1S. It's a very affordable control that works with Android and Windows, and you've got a whole bunch of different uh, connectivity options. So definitely watch the review to get a feel for it. Really cool controller. Now, one thing I mentioned during the review was that uh, the uh, latency was a little high on the controller when I was connected via Bluetooth. And a lot of you pointed out that I should be able to use a USB OTG cable to solve that problem. And, it's, and sure enough, you can use an OTG cable like I've got here uh, to solve the problem. In fact, they even installed its little uh, wireless dongle into it. And uh, we can hit start here and start playing the game now uh, with the X input going into the Android phone here. This is a Moto X Pure Edition. I'm still, though, getting the same latency issues I was having with uh, Bluetooth. I also tried to connect it up directly with the wire. Also got very similar latency issues. And then I got thinking last night, there must be uh, some way to test this latency thing out. And I remembered that my iPhone can shoot 240 frames per second. So I went out and did a bunch of testing last night of a whole bunch of different comparatives. I'm going to do a big video uh, probably Tuesday or Wednesday just comparing uh, what the the latency is between all these different controllers on different platforms so you can get an idea as to how all of this works. And if you are a retro gamer, uh, this is going to ruin your life because unfortunately there really isn't anything that uh, is, is even close to the latency of a real Sega Genesis hooked up to a CRT television. You can get closer, uh, but there is still some definite latency issues no matter what you're connecting to. And I'll get into more of that in that video. I'm really looking forward to doing that because it was a lot of fun just to test things out now that I have a a somewhat reasonable way, not scientific, but at least a good reasonable way to get a good comparative of the performance of these game controllers. And now it's time for a couple of things that are on my mind, and I had no idea that time has passed so quickly here, but MAME, the arcade emulator that uh, so many of us know and love, is now 20 years old. I can't believe it, but it's true. And I uh, was quoted in a Hartford Current article way back in 1998, 19 years ago when MAME was about a year old, and I was talking about how awesome it was back then, and of course now it is even awesomer because it supports so many games. Uh, but it was just amazing to see uh, how things have come 
along. You can see the article uh, linked down there below and uh, definitely check it out. And definitely let me know what games that you emulate on MAME. I'm always looking for new arcade experiences now that I've got so many different ways to play arcade games on all of my devices now. Really in a fun time that these things uh, work so well. And I got very interested in the Analog NT Lite this week. This is a NES clone console that is ridiculously expensive. It costs about uh, $450. And at that price, it really wasn't something I was remotely interested in up until I saw a post on the Atari Age forums. And I'll put a link to that uh, right below the image there that you can check out. And uh, there's a guy there named Kevtris. He's got a, a YouTube channel also. And this guy is, a, is one of these genius FPGA, Field Programmable Gate Array programmers. And what he's doing basically is replicating uh, the actual chips of these old consoles inside one of these Field Programmable Gate Array chips to uh, make them simulate the old hardware in a way that is more accurate, in my opinion, uh, than emulation is. And we saw this on uh, the retro USB AVS console that is also powered by an FPGA, which, by the way, costs a lot less. I'll put a link to that review down below. Uh, but what Kevtris is doing is uh, going to start porting over uh, different cores, different uh, sets of uh, chip instructions that he's made for other consoles so that this device will now do more than just the Nintendo, including uh, the ability to load games off of an SD card as well. So this is going to add a lot of new functionality to this console, and he's going to be uh, releasing new cores about once a week as he ports them over. I think we're going to be seeing a lot of Atari consoles, uh, some Game Boy stuff. I'm not sure how far he can go with this. I don't know if it's going to be able to do uh, the Genesis or the Super Nintendo, but uh, stay tuned. I'll be covering this as it uh, develops. I'm going to get one just because it's just so, this FPGA thing is very interesting to me, and I'm really looking for uh, some, some examples of why it is so. And I'm also going to test controller latency on these FPGA devices very shortly also. I think I'm going to uh, uh, revisit our retro USB AVS now that I've got a good system of uh, testing controller input lag. So stay tuned. This thing should be coming in soon and we'll be uh, trying out a whole bunch of different stuff on it. And if you were excited about using your Roku as a cable box, I've got some bad news for you. Comcast is going to charge you a fee for that privilege. Uh, so if you go beyond your primary outlet, which is the uh, one box they designate as part of your subscription plan, they're going to charge you a fee for every Roku that you connect on your network. So if you have only one television with a cable box attached, you can uh, return that cable box and get the Roku and uh, no fee there. But if you want to have more than one TV hooked up with a Roku, you're going to be paying a fee for every TV that you add uh, to the mix. This is a, a big disappointment, but not surprising coming from Comcast that they might find another way to extract fees from their customers. Also kind of puzzling because you can get the app already on your phone or your tablet for no fee. I'm not sure why they are doing this, but it's Comcast and that is what they do. If you want a better way, get a cable card and HD Home Run Prime. I'll put a link down below to my uh, full series about that I can get every TV hooked up in the house to cable for nothing, and it works really well beyond the cost of my cable subscription, of course, but uh, that's the way to go at this point. This is a huge disappointment from Comcast, but again, not surprising. And now it's time for some Q&A, and we've got a related question in on Comcast from Alan Bank, who was uh, writing in about the data caps we were talking about over the last two weeks or so. He's wondering what went wrong here in the U.S. He's from Romania. He has a gigabit fiber optic connection to his home, no data caps, and it's $11 a month. So something's going wrong here that uh, we're not getting this kind of service out here in the USA. I think part of the problem is, is that uh, the United States is a very big country by landmass. And although we've got a lot of big cities where you can uh, see some broadband competition going on, uh, most of the United States is not in a place where you can uh, compete as a small internet provider. So where I live, we have these two-acre subdivisions. The density is uh, pretty low in the sense that uh, if you are trying to wire up all these homes, you're not going to get as many customers per mile as you might in an urban environment. So a lot of the countries just kind of shut out from this. And I think that's kind of benefited uh, Comcast and others because they've become these regional monopolies in these places, uh, unregulated because the internet hasn't been regulated, and that lets them uh, impose whatever fees they want on people. And there might be an argument to be made on infrastructure because it does cost more uh, for Comcast to have me as a customer than it might if I lived in uh, New York City or uh, San Francisco or some other place where there's many more customers per mile. So that may be part of what's going on here. What I am excited about about, though, is seeing some uh, wireless uh, broadband connections come out. There are some things that have been out uh, in, in test markets here in the U.S., and I think that might be a game changer for areas like where I am, where it's very expensive to wire things up. But if you can uh, develop a very fast and reliable wireless connection that maybe shoots over to a cell tower somewhere nearby, I think that might be a, a really good alternative. And that might finally start to change things a little bit in favor of the consumer, and we might be seeing better consumer practices as a result of it, because my money will go uh, to the fastest connection with no 
data cap, and I would love to uh, have that choice as a customer here. I also think, though, there's some other issues at play here, especially related to net neutrality. I think the uh, cable companies have been, and I, I believe this really, really sincerely, that they've been getting screwed by the content creators, that uh, networks like ESPN require them to uh, offer that network to all of their customers and charge them a fortune per customer to do that. So the co cable company actually has to pay uh, ESPN to carry that network, and the uh, network forces them to uh, give it to every customer. So there's a lot of overhead that the cable companies have right now beyond infrastructure that I'm sure is driving a lot of this and might be why they are uh, so eager to set up fast lanes on their internet connections to stick it back to them, make the content creators pay uh, the cable company to carry their content, uh, which is the reverse of what the business model now is with TV. But my hope is, if there's never going to be any regulation over this kind of stuff, that we could at least see some competition. And my money is hopefully going to be on wireless broadband to bring that to me. And this next question comes in in response to our GameSir review about uh, the fact that it didn't work all that well with the Mac. And uh, we got a question here from Ziggy who's wondering what the best wireless controller for the Mac is. And I have to say it is the PS3 controller. This thing works wonderfully. I'm going to show you how it works right now. All right, so we've got my Mac running here. We've got the Open EMU emulator that I reviewed a long time ago that I'll put in the video description so you can see what that's all about. And I've got a PS3 controller. So all you have to do to get it going is just plug it into your Mac initially. Uh, so there is a wired connection required required uh, when you first try to get everything working. You'll see it start blinking, and when it does, after I disconnect it, it will turn off. I turn it back on again, and as you can see up at the top of my screen, we'll have a uh, Bluetooth connection here now because it will pair up to the controller automatically uh, when we get everything hooked up, and then you can start uh, playing your game here. So I can hit uh, start on the controller, and now I've got a, a wireless controller working with my Mac. I found this works not only with this emulator, of course, but uh, with Steam and a bunch of other stuff also. So I was able to do some of the Steam in-home streaming stuff as well. So uh, really cool stuff, very simple to get working, and uh, probably the best uh, game controller that I've seen wireless for the Mac. And now it's time for the second edition of our new segment called Channel of the Week. And I'm going to point you this week, uh, speaking of retro gaming, at the immortal John Hancock. He has uh, probably one of the most amazing game collections you will ever see. Uh, many complete collections of a lot of different consoles. And when I say complete, I mean he's going for every uh, sub-release of every game that's out there. And he's got quite a bit. Seems like a really nice guy also. He even brought his wife on for one episode to talk about uh, what it's like to be married to someone who is uh, really obsessed with collecting all of these old video games and he's got uh, some amazing stuff. He really goes into depth on uh, all these different consoles and many obscure games and uh, even the video that's on his uh, front page here, the RCA Studio 2. He really finds some cool stuff and if you're into uh, electronic gaming from the, uh, the past, this is a really fun channel to check out and uh, you can spend a lot of time just going over what his collection is. And one of the things that I've been uh, really noticing on YouTube is that there are a lot of nice people becoming very successful and this is an example of a nice person who's doing something really cool, sharing a passion with the world and uh, getting a lot of uh, followers from, from that activity. So uh, great channel, definitely check it out. Uh, you can link to it down below at lon.tv slash Hancock. So Q&A for you time. This is a uh, odd one, but it is related to the channel. Let me tell you why. So we got this comment in from another Lon, Lon Peterson with two N's, and he said, it looks like my hands could use some lotion or a less powerful soap. And this is a comment that happens every once in a while here on the channel because uh, in the Connecticut winter here, uh, everything gets dry and I'm uh, washing my hands a lot because I have children in diapers and that uh, requires a lot of hand washing, especially this week because patient zero was my nine month old baby who uh, was highly contagious uh, for a couple of days after she got over her uh, little illness there. And I did not want to catch it or spread it to the other kids. So I was washing uh, my hands constantly. Uh, and as a result, my hands are a mess. So I'm looking for some good uh, recommendations on moisturizers. So if you know some good uh, hand moisturizers I should look at to uh, make my hands uh, more attractive for the videos, uh, please let me know because I am definitely getting a lot of comments about it and I have, I'm at my wit's end here trying to resolve this issue. I made this move to Florida, which always solves my problems. If I go to Florida for like two days, uh, my hands get immediately better. So uh, for the winter, at least until April or May, uh, my hands are going to be uh, in pretty rough shape. So hopefully we can find a solution to that problem and I appreciate your help with that. So this week I've got a bunch of stuff planned, including that overview of game controller latency. I'm really excited about this one just because it, I found a way to really uh, convey this in a visual way. So we'll be uh, doing that later in the week. We're going to be looking at the HD Home Run that uh, now allows you to play DRM protected content on the Xbox One. This is a big problem for uh, people, I think with Time Warner Cable that encrypts
strips every single channel on their cable network and uh, makes it impossible to use uh, most of the software that works with the HD Home Run to watch content. But now on the Xbox One and Windows with a certain configuration, you can watch DRM content. Now they're going to be rolling that out uh, for a bunch of other devices, including Android very shortly. You know, a lot of you are asking about the status of DRM, so they are making progress, and we're going to uh, talk about that progress in an upcoming video. And you might be wondering what this is. This is the uh, Mi Air uh, 13 uh, from Xiaomi, and we looked at this briefly at CES, and I bought one. GearBest uh, sold one to me at a discount, so we're going to be uh, taking a look at this and uh, putting it through its paces. And what's unique about this 13-inch laptop is that it has a GPU. I think it's an NVIDIA 740. i got to double-check on that. Uh, that's not the, the usual thing on a 13-inch laptop. Usually we see uh, the Intel graphics, which are a lot slower. Uh, this one has got it integrated, and it's very lightweight. This is a really nice computer just in the first couple of uh, minutes of holding it today. Uh, so I'm going to be installing the English version of Windows on it because it didn't have that. And once I get all that going, we will uh, do a full review on this one. I hope to get to it this week. Uh, really nice laptop, very lightweight, and it's a shame that these things are not available uh, outside of China. But you can get them through a company like GearBest or something like that. But stay tuned for the review. We'll be uh, doing that this week as well. So lots to look forward to. And also this week, I'll be starting a new sponsored series of videos from Plex. And what we're going to be doing is uh, covering a specific feature of the Plex media server in these sponsored videos each month for the next several months or so. And the first thing we're going to look at is how it works with Amazon Alexa, the Echo uh, devices that you can shout commands at. Well, now there's a skill for Alexa that allows you to uh, connect up with your Plex media server. So we're going to be exploring that in depth a little later this week and look at some of the things you can do with it. And I'd love to get some ideas from all of you of Plex features you would like to see more information on, and uh, we'll do those in uh, future months in this series. And you can also help the channel by signing up for a Plex account without even having to pay for a Plex Pass. If you just sign up, we get a small commission. You can also give the gift of a Plex Pass to a friend at lon.tv slash Plex gift. We also have my Patreon set up at lon.tv slash Patreon, so you can make a monthly contribution to the channel and show up on the uh, list of uh, supporters at the end of each video. We also have YouTube fan funding set up at lon.tv. Uh, this is going away shortly, so I'm going to be switching over to something else, so stay tuned. I'll give you some details on that. I know a lot of you are giving via the uh, fan funding on a regular basis, so I will probably be setting up something through my Square store very shortly for you uh, if you wish to keep supporting the channel that way. Uh, definitely let me know, though, if you do use YouTube fan funding so I can add you to the monthly credit rolls at the end of the videos. If you want to engage with the channel, you can. We can go to my uh, extras channel at lon.tv slash extras. That is where I post a lot of other stuff like unboxings and other things that I'm doing throughout the week. lon.tv slash email is my email list. lon.tv slash Facebook to get me on Facebook. I post a lot of stuff there throughout the week. And lon.tv slash store where I uh, sell a lot of the things that I bought and are now uh, getting rid of. So you can definitely get a good deal on some new stuff on there. And a lot of you clean me out this week, so I've got to uh, refresh the inventory on there. I think i got one or two things left on the store right now, but uh, I will be getting more things up there very shortly, so definitely check it out if you are looking for a good deal on something that I reviewed. And that's going to do it for this week's weekly wrap-up. This is Lon Sybin. Please keep your questions and comments and suggestions coming. I greatly appreciate all of it, and I hope to get a little more content out to you this week now that everybody is healthy. This is Lon Sybin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.